We've known eMeet for making incredible value for money webcams, such as the eMeet S800 and this adorable eMeet Pico. But this bebe now has a bigger brother. I'd like you to eMeet the eMeet Pixie. I don't know, is there anything about it that makes it look like a Pixie? So like the Pico Plus, this has two cameras, is 4K, but this time it's PTZ. Question is, is it actually any good or is all of this marketing hype? There's only one way to find out. Let the unboxing begin. And by the way, this video is sponsored by eMeet, and they did send me the Pixie for review, but everything I say in this video are my thoughts only. Let's see what's in the box. What? It's got hands. Hello there. Cute little card. Oh, wow. It almost looks like a figurine. Comes with a Type-C to Type-C cable with Type-A adapter. We have the mount and the webcam itself. Ooh, here there, little guy. Now I have my cute little AI webcam friend. I want to give it a name. Uh, Larry, just because. But I'm going to keep saying e Meet Pixie anyway. So we got two cameras here. That is PTZ. I love that it swivels all the way up and all the way down. The webcam weighs. 120 grams. Add the mount. That is almost 200 grams. Let's try it out. So here's how the Emi Pixie looks in 1080p. You'll notice that without the studio light, there's this sort of HDR effect going on. And personally, I quite like this. And here's how it looks in 1080p 60. And this is for you gamers and streamers out there. Look at that silky smooth 60 FPS. They also have 2K 30 FPS, which is a nice middle ground for quality. And of course, 4K 30 FPS. Look at all of that detail. Let's do a quick bokeh or background blur test. So under typical bus shot framing, you won't exactly see DSLR or mirrorless camera levels of background blur. But when I get close to the camera, you can see just how much blurrier the background gets. But I probably wouldn't use it at this distance. But for product reviews where you put small objects in front of the Pixie, you can really see the background blur more. In terms of autofocus, the Pixie is lightning fast. And it's not just fast, you can see how confident the autofocus is as it shifts from the smaller object to my face. Very little focus breathing, if any at all. The Emi Pico did this really well, and now I think the Pixie is doing it at least just as great. Now in terms of minimum focus distance, this is an underrated feature. A lot of professional lenses, such as the one I'm using right now, actually can't focus that close. Let me show you. So for the Emi Pixie to be able to zoom in with near macro shots, that is a great feature to have. In terms of tracking, the Pixie was flawless. Super fast, super smooth, and very reliable. I don't know if having two cameras helps with that, but I just found that even though I tried to hide behind my chair and go up and down and just go all over the place, it would lose me for a while, but then it would eventually find me again. I'm really digging the Pixie for tracking. For gestures, they were mostly seamless. The only instances wherein the Pixie wouldn't be able to detect the gestures was when my hand was far away. Actually, I'm about two meters away from the Pixie right now, and the gestures are still working, but it's kind of struggling a bit. So it was able to track me all the way to the back of my room, but the response time wouldn't be as snappy. As for the Pixie's microphones, it has three modes. Original sound mode, which keeps your audio 100% intact. I am speaking into the Emi Pixie in original sound mode. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Live mode, which reduces static noises such as fan noises. I am speaking into the Emi Pixie in live mode. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. And noise canceling mode, which also reduces sudden dynamic noises. I am speaking into the Emi Pixie in noise canceling mode. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Unfortunately, I can't say that the microphones in the Pixie are an upgrade. Compare all that to my MacBook Air's audio. This is how my MacBook Air's microphone sounds. Now let's talk about the eMeet Studio software in general. Compared to other webcam software, I wouldn't say it's that fully featured. You got the basics such as filters, brightness, zooming in and out, things like that, and I actually like that simplicity. But they added one feature that wasn't here for 
for my Emi Pico review, and that is AI-generated scripts? I'm assuming that this is a feature that's supposed to help content creators, but when I gave it a shot, it failed, and the second time, I did get some results. The layout does seem very script-like, but with all the AI writing tools out there, I'm finding this feature rather unnecessary. The software is also great for setting your initial position, so the Pixie tracks you, and with a push of a button, it takes you back to your initial framing. One thing I like about the Pixie is the new whiteboard mode. Now, I didn't have an actual whiteboard. I just had a sheet of paper at the back of a frame, and the Pixie was able to detect this as a whiteboard. And what that does is it zooms into the whiteboard and flattens it out. And in case it doesn't detect a whiteboard, you can map out your own points to kind of spell to the camera where the whiteboard is. And for you vertical content creators, the Pixie has portrait mode. You basically turn the Pixie to its side and apply rotation in the software. Gotta say, the quality looks really good. Now for stuttering, the Pixie is actually one of the least stuttery webcams I've used in the past year. What I found strange was that the eMeet Studio preview would show some stuttering, but then the actual rendered video would not have stuttering. So it didn't actually stutter. If you've watched my previous webcam reviews, you'd find that there'd be a bit of stuttering across the various tests. In terms of thermals, I think the Emi Pixie is a home run. I've had it set to 1080p 60fps for an entire day, and it isn't even warm. Granted, it is 26 degrees Celsius in my studio with my AC, but that didn't stop other webcams from heating up. For 4K 30fps, I find that it would get mildly warm after about an hour, but it would never really get hot. And here's how the Pixie looks in low light. Again, we're getting this sort of HDR effect, and the shadows and darker portions of the video become a bit brighter. And honestly, for casual daily use, I love that. If I'm in content creator mode, sure, I'm gonna use my massive studio light. But when I'm just getting on meetings, I like the look that the Pixie gives you when you're not using a key light. On the other hand, when you are using a key light, I find that my face seems to be a little overexposed, and maybe some people wouldn't notice this, or some might even prefer it, but it's not to my liking, personally. Overall, the Emi Pixie is just a reliable PTZ webcam with two cameras. And though the sensor size at 1 over 2.55 inches is smaller than the competitions, having one camera as an imaging camera and the other as an AI assistant camera appears to be helping the Emi Pixie where it matters most for webcams. Image quality, autofocus, tracking, even temperature. The fact that it has the biggest webcam body among webcams I've reviewed in a while might be helping with its thermals. Overall, the Emi Pixie is one of the best webcams for its price. If you want to get your Emi Pixie, check out the links in the description down below. And I'll see you in this video.